is that as the kingdom of heaven, the dominion of heaven advances in the life of God's people, darkness is pushed back. Satan is losing. Hello, today my question is, what do we know about heaven? Um, this is an interesting question for me because I've often puzzled over this myself. Uh, I've had several conversations with colleagues and, and other people. And in fact, the, the nine times out of 10, what you hear from folks is they think of heaven as this place they're going to go and it's going to be one giant uh, music worship service and you're going to sing praise songs and you're going to hear the greatest uh, voices in the, in, in the world singing to God. And I've often thought that that is going to be the most boring possible place on earth. I love music, don't misunderstand me, but eternity with harps and hammocks and singing, that doesn't sound very appetizing to me. And I can remember having a long conversation with God about what is eternity like? What is heaven like? And, and that sent me on a quest to learn some things about heaven. So what I want to do today is, is give you three things that I've learned about heaven in my own reading of Scripture. The three things are simple. Heaven is a destination. Heaven is a place uh, that, that people are looking forward to going to. Uh, yes, there'll be worship there. All you got to do is read the book of Revelation. Uh, worship is a part of what's going on. There's going to be music there, probably the best music you've ever heard. I have no doubt about that. Heaven will be the most amazing place. Um, Paul says to the Corinthians, I has not seen nor has ear heard what God has prepared for his people. So this will be, if you, whatever you can imagine uh, as a wonderful place to go, millions and billions of times better that's what heaven as a destination is going to be. But my problem with heaven as a destination is simple. Too often Christians think of heaven as primarily a destination. We're heading to heaven. So I get, I get to know Jesus, and through Jesus I get to go to heaven. And some people kind of see that as the end game. But heaven isn't just a place. It's not just a destination. It's not just paved with gold and, and mansions and rooms and celebration. Uh, there's part of that, certainly. But heaven's also a dominion. When Jesus came, Jesus began to speak of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom speaks of a rule. Kingdom speaks of a dominion. Kingdom speaks of a king. Jesus himself said to the people uh, around him, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His idea was that the kingdom of heaven was breaking into earth in some sense, even in his ministry, as he went about healing and touching people's lives, preaching to people mentoring the 12 disciples. All of these things played a role in dominion. In fact, in the, the Gospel of Luke, Jesus had just sent out 70 disciples to uh, cast out demons, to do all these amazing miracles, and to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And when they came back, they were rejoicing that even demons were responding to them in the name of Jesus. And, and Jesus said, I looked up and I, I saw Satan falling from heaven like lightning. I'm not sure all the context of that. I don't want to try to unpack that uh, or offer an exegesis for it. But what it, what it seems to me that Luke is recording in his gospel and later in the book of Acts is that as the kingdom of heaven, the dominion of heaven advances in the life of God's people, darkness is pushed back. Satan is losing. That's what I mean by dominion. It's not just I get to go to heaven. I get to be part of the kingdom of heaven today. And, and I, I want us to, to, to seriously consider that. There's hierarchy here. There's a king. There's, there's opportunities to serve. There's opportunities to lead. There's opportunities to, to, to be a person behind the scenes doing the hard work. But there's also the recognition that whatever Jesus inaugurated all that many 2,000 years ago on the cross and in his resurrection was an inbreaking of God's kingdom into this earth. And that leads me to my third point. The kingdom of heaven is a discipleship or a discipline. We will look at it like this. Um, what that means is heaven is not simply um, a, something I look forward to like a vacation. Maybe you go to Disney World. Maybe you go somewhere else for your vacations and you get all excited. Your vacation is coming up. You can't wait to get on the, on the plane or get in a car or whatever. And you're going to drive. You're going to fly. You're going to go to this miraculous place and have this wonderful thing. That's what we tend to think heaven is. But heaven is more than that. Jesus said to his disciples, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus discipled his followers to do the things he did. Paul says to, uh, to, to the Ephesians, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 
Paul says in, in chapter 6 of that book, talks about the spiritual warfare we're engaged in. And so I want to combine this dominion and discipleship idea to make us think more clearly of heaven as it's pre- presented in the Bible. Yes, it's a dominion. Yes, Jesus is king. But it's also a discipleship. It's a discipline where we, as citizens of that kingdom— Paul calls us citizens of heaven. As citizens of that kingdom, we have the opportunity to push the darkness back by preaching the gospel, by working with others, by loving our neighbors, by doing all these cool things that Jesus taught us to do. Then he filled us with the spirit. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in us. That spirit is working in us to conform us to the image of Jesus, which means even as Jesus preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, we also have the same message. Someday Jesus will return. Someday the kingdom of heaven will become real as we pray in the Lord's Prayer on earth as it is in heaven. Until that day, our discipline is to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to do as Jesus has called us to do, to be disciples of this kingdom. Paul calls us ambassadors for Christ. And I'm gonna close with this thought. It's come to me in my study of Scripture that what our life is going to be like in that destination, heaven, is reflected in how we live now in our discipleship. So how are we doing? Are we imitating Christ? Are we living as Jesus intended us to live? Are we pushing back the darkness to produce the kingdom of light and the lives of other people? I remind us that Paul said to the Colossians that God in his grace and his mercy has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and placed us in the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. And the goal of that kingdom is for humanity to be everything God intended it to be. We ought to be growing in discipline and discipleship towards being imitators of Jesus. And that's heaven. I hope you come and join me in this discipleship.